Outrocast. Well, aside from having to do press, good day for you so far? Yeah, man. Going good. I haven't been up too long, so it's not too bad. Is it still uh, energy drink or coffee o'clock for you? Yeah, it's still, uh, I, I start my day off with a monster rehab. It, uh, I do those. I, I'm an energy drink guy, man. Like, I, I, I don't mind the coffee, but I, I prefer my energy drinks. I'm with you there. Are you a monster energy artist? If not, let's make that happen. No, man. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, we used to be. And then uh, I don't know how that would work now. It's just a little inside thing, you know. I, I love their drinks, but uh, some of the, the corporate stuff. I hear you, but your new album, not a corporate thing, but it's no, coming out until September. So you're a clearly a patient guy because I assume that you mastered it like a couple of months ago. So you're sitting on a new record and all that that's coming out in September. When did you actually finish it? So we recorded the first half of the record. We we had to do the record in two pieces because of how touring was last year. Uh, we recorded the first of the record June um, of last year, and then we recorded in January. And then the record was mastered in three. Um, we got a lot of And it, uh, it's... It's the hurry up game, but that is the music business, you know. So it's it's hurry up, music done, and then you got to wait to hear. It. But it is what it is, you know. And and we're just excited to after year being a they'll be able to music people are hear the right uh, music video for nervous, pretty high production. When did you actually film that? Man, can I? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Uh, when did you make the music video for Nervous? So we shot that video, um, I think it was about a month or so ago. It was literally like two weeks before the video came out. We shot it. Um, we shot it with uh, Kyle Loftus. guy's great at, at directing. He's amazing. Uh, we did it in Nashville. And it, was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was the first kind of video we got to do, you know, kind of like that. Did you know when you were making the album that it was going to be for Mascot Records, or is it that you shopped it and they took the album on? No, man, we, we've had a home with Mascot ever since we parted ways of Roadrunner. So, you know, it's until they tell us otherwise, we're making our records, you know, for Mascot to put out. Got it. So when you have that kind of a relationship, I assume the a and person's not visiting you in the studio. They just go at the end, de deliver us the record, accept it. That kind of a deal? pretty much man that's that's the way our deal works um you know we've we've been around a long time you know and we've had some success at radio and and we've been you know we've had records where we didn't even really go for radio you know um but we've always had a clear vision of what we wanted to do with our records and our, our music you know and and we're, we're very fortunate to be in the position we're in with mascot and and the way that they allow us to to operate yeah, when you say you've been around a long time, you're one of the youngest 20 plus year bands there is. You know, there's certain bands when you see that they've been around for 30 years, you go clutch. How can they have been around for 30 years while well, they formed in high school? Now, yeah, same thing, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the same thing with us. We, me and John Fred started playing when we were 13 years old. Um, you know, I just, I just turned 38 beginning of the month. So, me and him have been playing together for you know a quarter century at this point. When you think about it that way, it's a long fucking time, um, you know. But we've been playing since the summer I turned thirteen, and uh, you know, man, a couple years later we we started the band, and Ben's been with us ever since, and you know, Steve over the last couple of years. But mm -hmm. it's it's amazing, you know. It, it, even when people come see us live, it's like Steve has always been there. You know, it's 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 there's. Never been the Steve's never been the FNG, you know. He's he's never had to go through that. He's just been Steve. That's the Blackstone Cherry guy. Yeah, you he know? didn't get the Jason Newstead treatment of years of hazing before uh, right. you could be accepted. So you know, being twenty plus years into a career, is it kind of hard to put together set lists now because you've probably had fifteen singles that have gone to radio beyond the fan favorites of the things that you want to play. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, you know, especially when, when we're opening up, you know, it's hard because you get a 30 to 45 minute set most times. And, 
there's no way to play something off of every record. You know, there's just not. But, you know, at the end of the day, when we're opening up, we want to play the songs that, <clears throat> you know, the ones that that people kind of expect us to play and then sprinkle in some of the new stuff at the same time, you know? How far ahead are you planned in terms of touring? And I'm not saying, hey, give me every tour date, but if you know the album's coming out in three months and you're a road heavy band, are you booked into 2024? Man, we're not booked into 2024 yet. They're they're working on they're they're working on the earlier stuff for next year right now. But it's it's all coming into place, man. You know, we had to wait a little bit to figure out exactly when the record was coming out, so that put us behind a little bit. But you know, we're we're going to be on the road from now through the end of 24. You know, at, in some form or fashion. So so we'll be out there. Any idea if that's going to be mostly support? Because you're in this awkward, for lack of a better term, this awkward position where you're either like the biggest theater band or you kind of need two other bands to do arenas. It's one of those mm -hmm. kinds of scenarios. And being that you've been on the road with Guns N' Roses, Skinner, Nickelback, Def Leppard, et cetera, over the years, I'm sure there's pros and cons to being in front of those big audiences, but only playing 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're opening for bands like Skinner or ZZ Top or stuff like that, unless you're the direct support band, you know, people are still filing in for the day. So it's, it's, it's tough, but you got to go out there and make it the best you can. And obviously it's, the, the shows are a tough, are a tough thing sometimes, but the tour is such an amazing opportunity to to get out there on the road with the people that you've admired your whole life, you know, that that you go out there and you and you do your absolute best and, and you win as many fans as you can, you know. Being that you were playing with some of your bandmates as a teenager back to 13 years old, when you started out, was it all covers or were you originally were you into originals immediately? Man, so when we first started at, you know, 13, we were just kind of jamming on riffs of other bands and stuff. But then very quickly, it started into writing our own stuff, you know, and Blackstone Cherry from day one has been about writing our own songs. You know, we yeah. we didn't want to, you know, obviously we would play a couple covers here and there, but what's funny is we were covering regional artists instead of, you know, big artists that had been out for a long time and stuff. And, and now Kentucky's a hotbed for a lot of huge artists. But back when that started, pretty much it was a ghost town, I'd, I'd have to imagine. Like, for example, when I think of Kentucky, I know that Slint is from Louisville, from the indie rock world, and Jim James and My Morning Jacket. Lots of stuff out there. But were there any bands from your <sighs> region of Kentucky that had made it that you looked to and went, it's inspiring that they made it? Or oh, yeah. Dude, our our drummer John Fred, his dad was in, is still in a band called the Kentucky Headhunters, and in the late eighties, early nineties, they exploded. Um, you know, they were the fastest band to ever go gold or platinum. You know, in the country world, and yeah, man, it was it it was a massive, massive thing. So we got to study a lot of what they went through. You know, the ups and downs of the music business, and uh, it was a massive help for us. It was obviously something that you know, we took all advice, what to do and what not to do from from their history, you know, and sure, it, it's it's crazy. The area we're from has always been a hotbed of music that is absolutely incredible. You know, it not everybody's always got, you know, the chance to do what we've been able to do or what the headhunters were able to do. But there's so many musicians that are just as capable as we are, you know. Well, three quick questions, and then I'm going to let you go. And the, mm -hmm. the first question, and this is a stupid question, but feel free to dismiss it. But was there ever, ever an offer to do a co-headline tour with the band Buck Cherry? We, uh, we've toured with Buck Cherry a lot. Um, there, the, the majority of our touring with them, though, was when we first started out. So it would have never really been a, a co-headline kind of experience, you know. But there was, there was a tour we did several years ago where it was Blackstone Cherry, Buck Cherry, the Cherry Bombs, and it was just like an entire cherry lineup. <laughs> wow, I didn't know about that. That would have been a fantastic tour to see here in New York. Okay, well, at this point in time, I think if Blackstone Cherry and Buck Cherry toured together, that would be a proper arena tour. Because if you're looking at each band bringing three to 8,000 fans, totally different fan bases between the two bands, that might be- uh, You never know, tour. man. 
Yeah. Uh, ne next question. As a fan, what's the last concert that you went to? The last concert I saw, I'm trying to think. Um, the last concert I bought a ticket to, I haven't got to go to yet. Me and my wife are going to see Adele in Vegas this fall. Um, but I think the last concert I went to as a fan was probably a hailstorm show about a year or so ago. Got it. Good show, I can imagine. And last oh, yeah. question I have for you is I could never figure this out because everyone says Blackstone Cherry is a Southern rock band. And that's such a lazy characterization for a genre. Then you're on Mascot, which has a lot of shredders, a lot of prog people, a lot of interesting people on that end, yet you get played on active rock radio. How do you like your band to be described? Just a rock band? We're just Blackstone Cherry, man. I mean, we, we float through so many different stylistic, you know, kind of vibes. If, if you go back through our catalog, there's stuff that could touch on the fence of metal. There's stuff that could touch on the fence of country. And then there's this whole big pot of all kinds of shit that we like to throw together in the middle, you know? And I mean, yeah, we're Southern. Listen at me. You know, I obviously don't sound like you, you know, it's New York and Kentucky here, but you know, it's, I think it's that age old thing, man, of we're a rock band from the northernmost part of the South, essentially, you know, we're, we're, we're in Kentucky. We're more Ohio Valley than, than South really, yeah. you know, but we, uh, man, it's just, hell, I don't know. I mean, I, I talk like I talk, I'm from where I'm from, but at the end of the day, I just, I like Blackstone Cherry just being classified as good music. You know, if that's what you think. And if you think it's shit music classified as that, but <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's music for, for any kind of feeling, you know, I mean, that's, at the end of the day, putting yourself in a box only does that, you know, so we've never said, you know, we're this kind of band or we're this kind of band. We're just, you know, at, at the heart of it, we're a rock and roll band, but we're a lot more than than just a rock and roll band at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with being just a rock and roll band. ACDC is the greatest rock and roll band that ever did exist, you know, and mm -hmm. they do it in a way that that nobody can fuck with them when they do it, you know, but. I don't know, man. Like I, I, I love the approach when bands do all kinds of different stuff. But then at the same time, like I want to hear Metallica do seventy-two seasons. You know, like their new record is exactly what we've all been wanting Metallica to do. So, yeah, you know. But at the same time, what if Zeppelin would have only done Zeppelin one and never experimented and got to in through the outdoor? You know, or you'd have never heard the Crunch, or you'd have never heard, you know, uh, Fool in the Rain, or any of those those iconic songs that were less of a rock song and more of just a great song, you know? So it's, I guess that's a, a really, really long winded way of saying we just, we're a band that loves great music. You're a band that loves great music. And to echo your point about Southern rock, it's not like they call bands from New York, Northern rock or anything like that. So it's just a redundant. I look here <laughs> and one of my opinions, one of the best Southern rock bands of all time was from New York. Uh, which band was that? Mountain. Oh, yeah. Mountain from Long Island. Leslie Weinstein, Leslie West, of course. Yeah. I mean, dude, but like when you listen to their music, sitting on a rainbow, look, you know, like it's all country licks. Like Leslie was playing a lot of country style guitar and it just, you know, it, it was what it was. You just opened up my eyes hat because I never thought of Mountain as a Southern rock band. Totally right, Chris. Well, Thank you for your time. Hi, dude. Forward to uh, your next show in New York, whenever that is. But congratulations on this new record. It's great stuff. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Have a great day, man. Thanks. Outrocast.